Hi guys, welcome to my vlog. Um, I'm going to look at a technical model of a clean today um, and I'm going to compare a technical model that's easily accessible via a uh, YouTube search on the internet and compare that technical model to my own clean. It's uh, an area that is fairly new to me. I only recently started training it in the last sort of six months or so. So it should be interesting to see what is perceived online to be a good technical model um, against the level that I'm at and hopefully then I can critique what I'm seeing in both videos to improve and develop my own uh, technique of the lift. In this first section I'm going to have a look at the first pull um, which is the method of getting the bar from the floor to just above the knees. The first thing we can look at is the starting position of the lift and what we can see from the two lifters here is um, that we've got flat feet, shoulders directly above the bar, straight back, scapulas are down and back, uh, eyes facing forward. This represents a good starting position for, uh, for starting the, the clean. What we can see from the technical model now, um, are the athletes start to move up and back um, as they go through this first pull. They're keeping their hips higher than their knees. Um, the most important thing is that their trunk angle is remaining constant. That's the, the shoulders to the hips angle is staying the same all the way through. Um, it's only once they really start to get to the top of the first pull that they're starting to come upright. Uh, the majority of that first lift is staying, uh, keeping the trunk angle very, very constant. When we compare that start movement to my starting position, um, we can see straight away that the hips are too high. Um, and there's actually a bit of rounding in my T-spine as well, so that's probably due to a lack of range on my part. A uh, useful training tool maybe to lift the weights up onto blocks um, in order for me to find that ideal starting position. As I start the lift, the uh, first portion is not too bad in terms of keeping the shoulder to hip angle the same. Um, I need to do most of the movement, but I think due to the weight that I'm lifting as well, which is probably a bit over-optimistic, I don't correct that rounding at the T-spine and as you can see my elbows do start to move into the second pull just a little bit too early, um, suggesting that I'm pulling from a less than ideal position. The next section we're going to look at is the transition phase. So we'll go back to the technical model that I found on YouTube um, and I don't actually think it's the best example of a uh, transition phase. Using some of the resources available from the UK SCA on um, correct application transition phase, it does suggest that the hips need to extend, which is one thing that we are seeing in the technical model, the extension of that hip joint. Um, but it also suggests that we're looking for a natural forward movement and a rebending of the knees. And that's something that I don't think we're seeing in this technical model. Um, that would suggest that or due to the lack of knee bend is that we're not actually generating the eccentric forces that we would like to at the knee which is one of the capacities for completing this skill which is uh, one of the reasons that I don't think it's a, a, a great uh, example of a transition phase. So if you just go back to my clean um, I think in comparison to the technical model what you can actually see is that my knees are rebending and moving forward underneath the bar and there is um, some hip extension going on there as well, so I actually think that my my clean is probably closer to the ideal. So the next section of the lift is going to look at the second pull. Going back to the technical model um, and also the resources available in the UK SCA, we're looking for an explosive triple extension at the ankle, knee and hip joints. I think in this model we are seeing it at the ankle and the hip, Maybe not so much at the knee, that could be due to the uh, lack of rebending that I mentioned at the end of the transition phase. Um, but certainly we're getting it at the, at the hip and at the ankle. What else we're looking for is a shrug at the top of the triple extension. Um, I don't think that's quite there with this one either. We could do a little bit more in the shoulder joints in terms of shrugging. I think with my lift, um, the triple extension is a little bit more apparent. Um, and I think the shrugging is a lot more apparent as well. Um, you can see the bar moving quite considerably. Um, not too happy with my catching mechanics and my positioning underneath the bar. That's an area we're going to talk about next. And the final section on this vlog, um, we talk about the catch and the recovery phase. 
So what we want to see in this section, we want to see the elbows flex when the bar's at its maximal height, um, and then dropping down, pulling the body weight underneath the bar and landing on flat feet in the bottom of a front squat position. The athlete does that, he achieves that here, keeps his elbows uh, very narrow and quite high, um, and then during the recovery phase, powerfully drives up into an upright position, head up, leading with the chest. It's quite a good phase in this technical model. So just looking at my video as well, I'm not very happy with this phase of lift for myself. Um, my legs are not in a strong position coming out of triple extension. Um, I don't think I give myself enough time to correct that either by not dropping down low enough and catching the bar really quite high. Um, I think if I just drop lower, uh, jump lower a little bit quicker, then it will give myself a little bit more time to correct what, what's going on with my feet and with my legs. They're a little bit all over the place in this model. Um, it also doesn't give enough time to rotate my elbows round underneath the bar. I've normally got quite good range in a front squat. So this example is not fantastic and certainly an area that I want to work on, working on that vertical drop jump underneath the bar. So there we have it, a technical comparison between uh, some of the clips that you may find on the internet versus some from me in the gym. Um, as always, any feedback or questions is, is very, very welcome. Thank you for watching.